Hey, welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. Today I'm talking with a person who is an idea machine. Every time I talk to this friend, she has an idea. She has a new strategy. She has a new huge thing she wants to get going on. And I love talking to her because I'm a more plodding, get it done kind of person like a robot. And she's always swirling with a million ideas. So we're actually pretty complimentary to each other. And this is Phyllis Nichols. And I need you to understand that Phyllis is not only like, I do not only know Phyllis in the fact that she her, she and her team produce my podcast, but I've been in a mastermind with Phyllis. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with her before. She I, she helps me. I help her. So we've got a very deep level of knowledge of each other. And one day, I guess a couple of weeks ago, maybe two months ago, she sent this email. I'm on her email list. And she was talking about what happens beyond no like and trust in you when you're creating content. And I was like, what, wait a second, I, what are you talking about? And I just loved what she had to say because beyond no like and trust, very few of us ever go into that forest. So what is beyond the no like and trust? We assume it's by. And I don't know, I can't wait to talk to you, Phyllis, about this because I know that in 2022, as we head into 23, buying is a much longer journey for people. And so I want to introduce to you Phyllis Nichols. She is the owner of Sound Advice Strategy. She and her husband, Kelvin, own that. They, they have a great team working to produce podcasts. But today we're not necessarily talking about podcasts. Podcasts are a great way to do, I think, some of what we're talking about today. But I just want to say hi, Phyllis, and thanks for being here after that very long introduction. Well, hey, Jen. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, really happy to be here. And you know I love talking to you. I Every time I talk with you, I'm like... I walk away with a lot of good ideas on my own. You have a lot of good ideas too. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm thrilled and I was really excited when you emailed and said, hey, this sort of hit a chord. Let's talk about it. So um, I'm happy to do it. Great. <clears throat> so why don't you start by telling us a little bit about, first of all, what it means to go beyond the no like and trust factor. What else is there? Right. So I actually want to give credit where it's due. I learned this actually from John Jantz. Uh, he's um, the he's written a number of books. He's an he's an amazing marketer. Um, I believe his his brand he's known for is called Duct Tape Marketing. Oh yeah. At any rate, um, we worked with uh, Duct Tape Marketing for about a year, and so this is a concept that I learned from him, um, which is know, like, and trust, which I think we're all familiar with everybody. We've all heard that. And we all really kind of think in kind of just intrinsically understand that, but that's got to come first. Um, so he added to that and uh, it's, he calls it the um, marketing hourglass. Mm -hmm. So if we think about no like, and trust, we actually see that as the funnel, right? We, and we, so the top of that, the funnel is sort of like the top of the hourglass. And then there's the narrow part of the hourglass. And then it, right. It, the traditional hourglass expands again at the bottom. So after no like, and trust, he identified try, buy, repeat, and refer. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an ideally in a perfect world, right? We would have content for all of those steps in our process at some point. And, um, you know, again, in a perfect scenario, right? Clients would go from the beginning, the know, like, and trust, and they would just move right on through to the trying and buying and so on. Um, and sometimes that's exactly what happens. Um, but what I mentioned in that email, and, and I think what you I think would be helpful to talk about is, you know, most of us stop after no like, and trust content. And some of us do some sales content, right? Like we might have sales pages and things specifically um, created to sell, but even, even some people don't really even do that. So, so yeah. So I want people to really just go beyond no like, and trust and to know those safe, easy ways to do that. Um, because that's really what your people are looking for. Yeah. So I want to talk about this visual of the hourglass. It makes a lot of sense to me. The top of the funnel is no like and trust. So what happens in that middle piece where the hourglass glass gets more narrow? Why is it well, slow down? 
I think that's where it's try and buy, right? Because we know, for example, um, at the top of the funnel, at the top of the hourglass, right? We might be connected with hundreds or maybe even thousands of people online, right? You have a very large following, um, you know, like all these different people are maybe reading your emails or following you on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, right? And so there's that, that's what represents, I think, the top of the hourglass where it's really large. And the narrow part just means, you know, those are the people who've actually chosen to move forward with you and buying and buying your services, buying your products, hiring you, you know, whatever that looks like for you in your business. I and like then- that because people are struggling to take action, even though that's what we, so at the beginning of the journey, taking action looks like listening to the podcast, opening the email. And then we get to the point where there's a big slowdown and we want them to take different kinds of action. Right. That's right. And we want to make it really easy. So I think two things come into play. One, I think is just our own from a marketer standpoint, right? We're marketing something, whether it's a book or a course or whatever that is. Right. So, um, you know, we assume, I think a lot of times, or we're hopeful, I think, that if we just put enough great information out there and we show up and we're really nice and we're kind and we're helpful and we're genuinely, genu- and, and literally, I, there's so many people who are genuinely just as generous and lovely as they can be. We're hoping, right, that everybody will just automatically go, oh, hey, I should buy some stuff from this person or I should hire this person. Right. And sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes, sometimes that's exactly what happens, but it doesn't happen often enough. So what we need to do is, is really help people along the journey. Um, So, you know, Jen, I love sales. And so one thing I want people to know moving forward into trying and try content in particular is that people love to buy. People really do. Like we love to buy things. We love to invest. We love to invest in ourselves and our business. We love to buy things for our kids and our families and our homes. Like we love to buy. Right. So so, so buying isn't the hurdle. I think that we, we sometimes think it is. Yeah. What, so I, I just want people to feel encouraged by that, but I think that's where try content then can become so helpful. There's something that you said, this is a quote directly back to you. Selling is making an offer and giving someone the chance to say yes. And I think that uh, tr- we're going to talk in a minute about what trying looks like, but if your try has a price tag attached to it, I don't, you don't need to feel gross or bad about that. No, right. Not at all. Yeah. Um, and thank you for bringing that quote up because I mean, I, first of all, I truly believe that I, I just know in my heart, that's really what sales really is. It's not about manipulating people or anything, but and also giving them a chance to say yes, we're also giving them the space to do that, right? We're giving them the space to really make, maybe make a decision like, should I invest in myself? Should I go ahead and do this? Should I, you know, like, does that make sense? Like sometimes totally. like, people just need that space. Like, oh, like Jen wants to work with me. Like Jen would like for me to be in her group. Like sometimes that needs to be invited in. Right. So that's sometimes, you know, I think, I think many of us are so concerned about like offending or for people feeling that we're trying to be pushy in our sales approach. When in fact, I think most of the time, you know, people are just waiting to be invited and we're not inviting. We're not inviting. I remember, I remember years ago, I knew two women who were in the financial services realm and I, I knew both of them equally well. I liked both of them equally well. One made an offer for my husband and I to come in and sit down and talk about it. And the other never did. And she later said to me, oh, you're working with her. Oh, that's really interesting. I just assumed that since John was who he was and does the kind of work he does, that you didn't need a financial planner. So I never asked you to come in. And that's the perfect example of what you're talking about here, that that come in and have a conversation and we're going to, we can talk more about like what other kind of try is, but it's, it, I was never invited in. It would never have occurred to me. I don't know if I was the right person for her. I don't know if she worked with people like me. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. And so when we're not, we're not giving people that space, um, you know, we're, we're leaving a lot up to chance, right? We're leaving. And, and sometimes again, as a consumer, I'm sitting over here going, gosh, you know, I really wish Jen would let me know how I could hire her. Or I really wish I, you know, this, this personal trainer over here, that's doing such a great job with my friend. I really wish I knew if they were taking new clients or whatever, 
right? And, and, and we're not, we're just not getting the invitation or we don't have the space to make that yeah. decision. So let's talk about what try kind of content looks like. You had some great examples that I had never really thought of Warby Parker, for example. So can we just start there and kind of expand? Sure, of course. So yeah, Warby Parker is such a great example, right? Because they just totally blew up an entire industry, right? With their whole concept of, hey, we'll just send you some frames to your house and you can just try them on in the privacy of your own home. Mm -hmm. And then you can see what you like. And then you can, you right, you're trying them and then you're going to send back and you're, or you're going to buy, you know, I bet you some people buy them all, right? Or you're going to send the back the ones you don't like, and you're going to keep the ones you like. Like, hello, <laughs> what, how, right? Like, that's just, you know, in hindsight, it seems like the simplest solution ever, right? But it it wasn't. I mean, people just didn't think about it for, for before that. So for people who are sitting there going, okay, but I'm not Warby Parker. So mm. what do I do? Um, so try content. It, there's two things. One, again, you're just, you're literally giving people the the chance to take the next step to try on, you know, to try whatever it is you're offering. For you as a marketer, you know, what I would, in the best scenario is you are also going to be put best, your best foot forward. You're going to really, this is your chance to sort of dazzle somebody again, not in an insincere way, but to really give them some of your best stuff. So they get a really true sense of what it might be to work with you or what it might be to buy your product or what have you, or attend your events, whatever that might be. Um, so so we want to go into it with that mindset. Like, what could I do that could really wow somebody mm -hmm. and, and also give them like a really great taste. So we go back to some try content. Like one of the things like, look, I'm a huge Costco fan. Right. And, um, <laughs> what, what are they things they do? Right. They have people giving you literal samples of food right. and going, Oh, Hey, try this, try this. And, you know, I, I, I should call them someday and find out the statistics on this, but I'm sure they know for sure when they yeah. have you sample the little pretzel balls with butter or whatever they are, um, you know, they probably see the sale. They know the sales of those things are going to go up by X percent, right? Because right. they know when you, you've gotten a sample and you got to try it and they know, like, obviously you're just going to go, those are really good and you're going to buy them. Um, but some other examples of try content, you know, Jen, you do this really well. So you have um, done both free and paid like little mini courses where you take one piece of the, the, the things that you teach, you take a very specific part of that, not your whole program, right. But a very specific part and you teach that and you break it down for people. That's amazing. Try content. Mm -hmm. um, so I like, you know, so if, if there are people who are like service providers, you know, I think that's a really great way to do it. I think again, um, there's another, another person I know, one of our other podcast clients, her name is Shannon, and she runs um, uh, like a, a website academy. It's a, it's a one year group kind of thing, mm -hmm. training program. And one of the things that she does is she does these monthly calls where she literally, like you do, and she supports um, her, her students basically and she supports them and answers questions and walks through scenarios and provides templates but these and these calls every I think it's every week or every couple of weeks are really meaty like they really cover a lot of information and she's very generous and answers all these questions and so about once a quarter she invites people who are not paid members of the group to listen into one of those calls and mm -hmm. to see what it is what would it really be like to be part of this um, you know, this, this group in this community, I think it's, you know, amazing. It doesn't cost her anything to do it. The other people in the group, I think actually really support it. They, a couple of them get to share their personal story. Um, and it, it's, it's a, it's a nice benefit for everybody. And as a, somebody listening in, I, you know, then I have a really great opportunity to decide, like, does this sound like it's right for me? Right. Is this kind of group vibe fit for me? Do I feel like I fit in? Or maybe I don't feel like I fit in. Mm -hmm. And now I know I can make another choice, but I think that's a great option. I love so far. You've talked about products, physical products. Uh, you've talked about information, perhaps a piece of your program that somebody could get an early win on. You've also talked about an experience, come into the call and uh, see if this feels right. And the I love that because it's really hard for people to trust another person today in this online world 
it's hard for them to trust themselves too, because they've either gotten burned or they've overcommitted or they're over capacity. And the question really is, is this really going to move the needle for whatever I need it to do? Um, and just, and sometimes you, you've read the whole sales page, you've followed the person for so long, but you maybe haven't thought to answer a question that you don't even know you need to ask until you have the experience. For example, I was invited into a networking group. They meet every single week. This thing runs like clockwork. It's like a military precision ship. And I, I was like, oh, you know what? I could use some more networking. I could meet some more people. So I went to the first call and the experience I had informed me of so much about the people on that call and how it was run. But I never would have been able to even ask those questions about the environment or the diversity of the people who were in there or how it was approached until I had tried it. So that is another benefit that you give to people when you let them into an experience that right. maybe they would never have had unless they like even even reading the whole sales page can't give you that kind of information. Right. Yeah, I'm, that's right. And, you know, I think that's a great example. So if there are people listening who have communities or who hold events, um, you know, something, some sort of trial version of that could be just the perfect thing that somebody's waiting for. Um, and maybe you do it. I like my friend Shannon does it. I think just kind of quarterly. It's not certainly not every month. It's just on occasion. Um, I, I think to some other easy stuff. So I also don't want people to feel like this always has to be free. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be giving things away. So I know that you have run some of your, you've run a couple of your trainings at low cost, very accessible, very low cost, very reasonable costs. Again, it gives, you know, you're getting, people have something invested in it, right? So we know when we sign up for free training, sometimes people don't show up, mm -hmm. but if I've paid for it, I'm probably going to show up and actually participate. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, but I still get to try it out right before I'm making maybe a four or five figure investment with you. Yes. Um, I think that is really helpful. And I also think if you're somebody who's like, well, this is all great, but I don't have a group. Um, you know, there are, there are other things that you can do. Um, I'd like to mention just two more. And one would be, um, uh, you know, like literally opening the doors or giving somebody a taste. Like, so again, authors do this all the time, right? Where they give you, they'll give you a free chapter of their book um, and you get on the email list. Um, I think, and I have to bring up podcasting. So I think podcasting is, is, is one way that you can help people try um, I have two great examples. Jen is first of all, one great example. Jen teaches on her show. She's done coaching live on her show where she's literally working with a client and, and walking through uh, some, some steps to help them get clarity on their message, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. So it's very clear what working with you would be like. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a good example. There's another um, person that I know that has, uh, she does high-end coaching. It's a, it's a pretty significant investment. And so she has three, she says, before we even book a discovery call, I need you to listen to these three podcasts. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, one of them is like, here's what working with me is like. And she kind of goes through that. The second one is um, where she's actually talking to one of her clients and sharing basically sort of a testimonial, sort of a success story. And the third one is where she talks again about kind of the process and what to expect and what, what you should be prepared to do as well. And then if you, after you listen to these three shows, um, you know, if you still feel like this might be a good fit for you and you might want to take the next step in the investment process, it, which is getting on a call that doesn't cost any money. Right. Um, but it's, so it's great for her, right? She's clarifying people that want to come in, but also people are getting a true sense of what it's like, you know, how she talks about things, the way she approaches her business, all those kinds of things. So, um, and this is asynchronous, right? She, she tells everybody to listen to this first day. Can, I can do it on my time when it's convenient for me. Um, and she's not, you know, maybe on the phone talking with somebody trying to explain all this initial stuff. So when you get on a call with her, like you already really know a lot about her and what she's going to do and what that call is going to be like. And mm -hmm. she already, you know, then, then you, know, you can quickly start talking about things that are really important. Like if I'm going to make an investment with you, here are some really, some other questions that I have that I really need to have answered. or I really want to know. Wow. Those are great ideas. 
I love that. Does she find that people engage with the listening or do they, and maybe some people engage with it, but some people bypass it and just want to book with her. Like, you know, there's all different kinds of people in our audiences. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Obviously she can't, I mean, test to see if somebody sure. really does, but I, I think she's, I think it's pretty clear though, if people come on and they have really basic questions about what working with her is like, mm -hmm. that she's co she covers really clearly on the podcast, then she probably gets an indication like, oh, you probably didn't listen to that information. I mean, it's not, it's not required, but I think it's helpful. And again, totally. as a, as a consumer, right. I don't always, but giving the option to kind of do my own investigating on my own time when it feels comfortable for me. And I'm not, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm more likely probably as a consumer, I'm usually going to take that step unless maybe I've already decided I want to work with this person, or maybe I feel like I just need a shortcut. I don't know. I mean, certainly consumer behavior sometimes like we all do that we're like i'm just going to schedule the call whatever totally um yeah and I, I mean i don't think it's a problem i think it's just again for uh, for those of us who would like a little more information who want to get some questions answered before we feel like we're on the spot or we're taking up somebody's time or taking even our own time right um you know i want more information that's what try information is for Right. If I listen to those podcast episodes and they don't jive with me and I'm like, okay, I don't even like the way she talks about this. <laughs> I'm not, or, or maybe it's just like, you know, so we're not, and everybody's not for everybody. Right. Totally. And so maybe I'm like, she seems like a perfectly lovely person, but this is not going to be right for me. Like I, you know, whatever. I just doesn't feel like I'm going to click with that person. Yeah. Then it's okay. Like she hasn't spent a lot of time with me. I haven't felt weird putting any, but you know, I don't feel put on the spot or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not yeah. divulging information about my business to someone that I don't feel like I want to work with. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, there's so many ways that I feel that podcasting and well, voice specifically could be an easy way for people to try. Um, even when people, so there are people out there who want to see your stuff on video and they want to read the transcript and they want to read the captions, right? There's plenty of people who want to see the video. And then there's people who just want to have it in their ears. Mm -hmm. um, so giving people an uh, options, right? And I think an important option is having people be able to hear your voice. I can imagine. So the example that you just gave about the pre setting up a call, but also have maybe having a private podcast with like three or four really actionable items. They could be, they could be connected to your welcome series, or they could even be something that somebody opts in for. Uh, there's so many ways. And so if you, I'm, I'm just putting this out there because I know Phyllis is an idea machine and she can make anything happen. And her team is incredible. And if you're thinking about Paul, that's taking so nice. some of your try content and turning it into audio to use it's a really passive way for people to connect with you. I love the the point that Phyllis is making here without feeling like somebody's hovering over you. It's like, you know, when you take a test drive and the salesman's in the car and you're just like, I to like, I need to drive this longer and I want to listen again. And I want, but like, really it's like being able to take a test drive on your own without somebody in the car with you or go through an open house for without the realtor, right. like hovering over you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jen, that's so great. Those open houses and test drives were also on my list of try content, but you're so right, right? Like sometimes like that's not, neither one of those, some, sometimes I think open houses can be comfortable. Most realtors will be like, I'll leave you alone. Come find me when you're done. Yeah. Um. But, but not all the time. Anyway. Yeah. But the test drive thing, right? Like they're in the back seat and you're like, oh my God, are they judging me as a driver? You right. know, they think I'm like, uh, <laughs> right. It's totally uncomfortable. Right. Um, at least, at least it is for me. I haven't done that in a while, but um. But yeah, I'm going to just put a plug for repurposing here. So even if you yes. did an audio piece of try content, you could record yourself doing it on video and repurpose that. You could download the audio and create a transcript. So people who want to read can read it. And then you can have it as a private podcast or even host it on your website that is produced beautifully. So it sounds great and people can listen to it. So there's ways to repurpose all of this content that you're creating so people can try it in lots of different ways. Yeah, that's that's so smart, Jen. You're right. And here's the other thing too. So if you're putting up amazing no like and trust content and I find you because I'm searching for something over on Pinterest or wherever and, and your stuff pops up, you know, we've all done this, right? We go down the rabbit hole. The next thing you know, I'm clicking, I'm on your website now. I'm looking at some other information and I'm, I'm figuring out like, what does their website look like? But if there's a huge big thing at the top that says, start here, try this first, or yeah. basically almost like the, here's my free sample. We don't, we're not going to call it that, but you might want to just be like, 
you know, want to know more, start here. Love that. Most of the time, like if I am truly interested and I'm really doing a little bit of research, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to check it out. And maybe it takes me right to a video that you've done. And there's a link also for audio, whatever. Yes. Right? Like so easy. This is set it up one time. It doesn't have to take a ton of energy. It could be content that you've already created. You're now just really positioning it. So it's easy for me to find and consume when I'm ready. And now I'm all of a sudden, you know, again, and we're talking about that funnel, right? So once we go from try content, we're much more likely to buy. So when, when somebody has tried something and most of the time, you, you know, want, you probably want to have it be some sort of an opt-in if you can, right? So now you can go, Oh, somebody, somebody checked out my try content, mm -hmm. right? They raised their hand, they expressed interest. I'm going to make sure I have some sort of email follow-up and you might even want to try like a personal one where you do, um, and again, this depends on, you know, what you're selling. If it's a high investment course though, I think it'd be worth doing even like a little, um, oh, what's that video service? Um, oh, like loom. Well, it could be loom, but the other one I'm trying to think of, um, where you can send it to them and they can reply back all of a sudden my oh, brain I don't just, know. Um, I don't know. One's called Boomerang, but that's not the one oh, I'm thinking about. Oh, I know what um, you're talking about. Bomb bomb. Yeah, something like that. There's a couple. So, you know, where you record like a short video specifically going, hey, Jen, I saw that you took my, you know, my my free course or I saw that you checked out my $27, yeah. how to get started, whatever, whatever thing. And I'm going to send you a personal, maybe like 60 second little video saying, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got your answer, questions answered. If you'd like to know more, you know, the next step would be to do this, to, you know, yeah. set up a call or check out this other information. Yeah. Um, th again, that's fairly high. That's obviously high touch. And if you're getting hundreds of people opting in, that's not going to be scalable. Right. But if you have a, you know, if you're running a really expensive coaching program or something like that, um, or you're trying to sell a house, yeah, you're probably going to make that call, right? And right. be like, hey, I, I saw that you checked out our information. You know, what questions do you have? How can we help? Right. Phyllis, thank you so much. Where can people get in touch with you to either work with you or start to get to know, like, and trust you? Ah, Thank you, Jen. Um, so you can check us out at soundofistrategies.com. And if you want to go to soundofistrategies.com slash uh, try, we actually have a post with a lot of this information and even more examples and links to some other examples so that you can sort of see what I would encourage people. Like, you know, if you have a product, like, is there a Warby Parker kind of thing you could do? Like, see, you know, try on some of these things and see how they might fit for you. Um, and um, you know, give people the chance to find out how great you are. Yeah. I love that. Thanks Phyllis for coming on, not only to talk about the idea of it, but to give, you're always really good with specifics and it's fun to just go back and forth. So I want to plug Phyllis's company Sound Advice Strategies, because if you are looking to do a podcast and you've been feeling intimidated about doing a podcast, because there's quote unquote, so many podcasts, Phyllis has information on how many podcasts are actually like going. And if you have been wanting to get your podcast up there, this is a great time to do it. And so I highly recommend the team at Sound Advice Strategies. They always have my back. They're flexible and they're just pretty incredible. Oh, thank you, Jen. Well, you are a great client to work with and you know, I, you know, I'm a personal fan of your show. Um, and, uh, I listen to it all the time. Um, and it's great. Thank you so much for having me on. You know, I love talking about this stuff. Thanks, Phyllis. I'll see everyone next week. Thanks for showing up for Content Creation Made Easy. Bye.